Changing minds one thought at a time. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the very first Changing Minds Online call of 2015. Good evening, Akina. How are you doing today? Oh, good evening, Jessica. I am great. I'm so excited that we're starting the year off in a high note. How about yourself? Yeah, I mean, it is such a, it's going to be such a wonderful year. We have so many great things planned. Um, I am so excited. I know we've been contacted by lots of our listeners, lots of friends, family members, talking about their resolutions, talking about all the wonderful things that they're changing in their lives this year, and we know that we are all up to creating some really big things this year. You know, tonight's call is all about changing and changing your life and making better choices. Here at Changing Minds Online, you know, we believe that you can, you know, really create anything you want with your life no matter where you start from. You know, it's about really just kind of deciding to make that choice to say, you know what, my life can be better. There's a better way out there, and I'm going to do something different. And that's what our mission is all about. And you know what better way to kick the year off with our first Sunday Superstar call? You know, on our first Sunday Superstars, we recognize superstars, people who've decided that they're going to change their choices, they're going to change their lifestyle, and that they're going to change their lives and really, truly make an impact on the world. And you know what a wonderful way to, to really honor ourselves, our listeners, and our friends by starting off this year on that note Um, Tonight, I'd like to welcome a good friend of mine on the call, you know, Michael Levy. Michael and I have met. We are currently taking a leadership course together, and we met through that. I am so inspired by this man. He is so generous, so loving, so authentic, and just has this absolute love and zest for life. He brings energy into the room. You know, he is just an inspiration to everyone he meets. And I knew when I heard his story that I had to have him on the call. And, Michael, it is an honor to bring you on our call tonight as our very first 2015 First Sunday Superstar. Welcome to the call, Michael. Well, thank you very much, Jessica. Uh, I am honored to have this distinction of being the very first on your show. Uh, It's really, it it really uh, put me in a, of a very, very humble state of mind uh, when you asked me to honor this. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to share my story, and uh, hopefully you will be able to inspire some other people. Yeah, absolutely, Michael. You know, I know the amazing man that you are today, but I know your life didn't always look like it did today. And just because, you know, I really want to to give our listeners your full story. You know, can you take us back to what your life looked like? You know, who was Michael Levy before you became the amazing man I know today? Wow. Okay. Uh, (laughs) Well, I come from a very, well, you know what? I really came from a very good background. Uh, I had some loving parents and a good education and the whole thing. I somewhere along the line, got into my head that I could uh, do things differently than the way I was taught. And I made some bad decisions with associates, people that I was hanging out with. uh, And it it basically snowballs into a lifestyle of craziness, degradation, humiliation, uh, homelessness, and the whole thing. I went through... uh, I started experimenting with drugs and somehow got addicted to it and that was the uh roller coaster downward roller coaster spiral of my life. Uh I was caught out there in that that crazy world for a good twenty five years which consisted of uh my addiction uh, which led to homelessness and uh, all sorts of uh, nefarious activities that eventually led to my incarceration. I, uh, I mean, without really going into specifics, but uh, I had reached a point of uh, not 
really caring whatsoever what happened to me. And I had uh, totally disconnected from my family, uh, my friends, the people that I had gone to school with, the guys that I grew up in my neighborhood with. It was... uh, it was just a crazy lifestyle that I was involved with, uh, getting involved with people who were of like nature, you know, you know, uh, birds of a feather flock together. So I was uh, teaming up with people who under normal circumstances uh, I would have definitely avoided uh, because I knew that, you know, it was just bad news being involved with uh, people like that. And, being in the grips of uh, that lifestyle, it was the only uh, choice that I saw at hand that where I could survive and, and, and continue on the uh, lifestyle that I had chosen. It, uh, it got to a point, in the beginning, it was fun. Let, let, me, let me be very clear about that. In the very beginning, it was fun. It was exciting. Uh, there was a lot of new experiences. Uh, but it wasn't long before uh, the fun wasn't as much and new uh, scenarios were popping up that were not fun. Uh, it was, uh, you know, uh encounters with the law, uh, even though in the very beginning those were brief encounters and and just uh, warnings, but a sign of things to come that I wasn't really uh, taking heed of. And eventually it became a regular, a regular event in my life where I was constantly being uh, confronted with uh, with law enforcement, uh, with uh, confrontational people, you know, because of the lifestyle and the things that I was doing. So uh, it, it became a very stressful lifestyle. Do you want me to go on? Well, actually, I would like to know, when did you think, Tell us about the turning point when you realized that you were done with that life and you wanted to become the Michael that we know today. Um, Well, to tell you the truth, there were a couple of uh, interventions that happened. And uh, like I said, I was involved in this for a long time, 25 years. And uh, I think... The very first intervention where I was, uh, I had been arrested and my parents interceded and they uh, put me into a drug program. And for a while that worked for me. Uh, And I thought that I was changing my life around. But the influences that were out there just, I just hadn't made that that total commitment to. to live a life of of uh, abstinence and 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 uh, committed life of rehabilitation and uh, being a asset to the community, you know. Uh, I guess I still had reservations, so uh, the lifestyle continued back on. I think the greatest. Uh, incident, the biggest incident that really changed everything for me was upon my last incarceration. Uh, I was uh, upstate, and there were things going on around me uh, that I was participating in activities that were just as crazy as when I was out in the street. And I was getting ready to go before the parole board, and I knew that I was going to get hit because, you know, (laughs) it was just obvious that I hadn't been rehabilitated. Uh, And this officer came up to me, and he was an intervening voice. He asked me if uh, I wanted to uh, make a difference in my life, and 
for some reason, I said yes. In my mind, I was saying, no, or get out of my face. Are you crazy? Because I had that big image. I was, uh, you know, I was a man. And this guy here, he, I don't know, he may have saw something or whatever, but he offered me an opportunity to uh, get out of the facility that I was in and uh, go into a program that they were starting, a new program that they were starting up in this whole particular prison. And I found myself saying yes. And before I knew it, I was out of there and into this new uh, place that where the first time I was in an environment in prison that was totally different, that was uh, conducive towards rehabilitation and changing your life. And it was the first time that I ever heard of uh, different concepts, a disease concept, you know, for those who were addicted to uh, drugs and alcohol. And finding out that I think one of the biggest things that I found out was that I was really not responsible. Well, it wasn't my fault of the things that had happened, but I was accountable for my actions. And if I were to start uh, taking that responsibility right now and taking charge of my life that things could change. And I embraced that concept. Uh, and even after hearing the statistics that only one in 33 people uh, make it out of prison and do not go back, you know, they call it uh, the rate of recidivism, uh, I was able to, well, in fact, when I heard that, I, I made up my mind that I was going to be the one out of those 33 that did not come back. Uh, that was my decision at that time, and that's how I finished off my uh, my particular sentence at the time. One of the things that happened while I was there, uh, and I, I like to relay this to folks who are incarcerated, was that I had made a I had made this commitment to change, but I remember when I was first locked up that I had a commitment to come out and continue uh, basically the same lifestyle, but trying it in a different venue, uh, which is insane. You know, I mean, it's like uh, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. But when I first thought about it, it didn't seem that way. So uh, when I was offered the opportunity to come down to a work release, I refused it because my plan was to get to work release and uh, start over with insanity. So I told uh, the uh, the people in charge that I wanted to stay there until my CR date and, uh, you know, so that I could learn some more about this recovery and, and, and put myself in a better mental state of mind and maybe even help some guys that while I was there. Uh, when I finally did come home, I uh, came into a halfway house and that was where real life hit me again because now uh, I, I had the responsibility of owning my life and, and, and creating a new lifestyle for myself, which meant uh, getting a job and going out and uh, finding a place to stay and the whole thing. The great thing about it was the halfway house was basically patient and it was a uh, helping hand for me. Uh, and I took advantage of all of the encouragement and the resources that they had. So when I did get that job, I uh, took advantage of it. I made sure that I was one of the best employees that uh, that they had, and it was a good thing that I did because I've been working on at this particular place for about two years, and I didn't have a driver's license. What I wanted was I needed to have a driver's license to be able to to uh, elevate myself in uh, positions in this company. So I went down to motor vehicle, and this is a little bit of a story, but to make a long story short, uh, while I was there trying to clear up some of the wreckage of my past with the motor vehicles, uh, I stepped out of the uh, courtroom one day, and <clears throat> this gentleman asked me if 
my name was Michael Levy, and I said yes. And the next thing I knew, I was found myself in handcuffs again. Oh, they had had found a warrant that I don't know how old it had been, but uh, I was arrested and I was back behind bars and looking to head back upstate. The uh, first thing that I did was I well I remained calm instead of freaking out, and uh, I thought about you know what do I need to do, and the only people that I really had in my corner was uh, a young lady that I was seeing at the time and uh, my employer. So I called her and told her to tell my employer what had happened and that I wouldn't be to work for a couple of days. Uh, And, I mean, when the universe is in your corner because you made a commitment to do something good, everything works out right. Uh, This guy sent a lawyer to court for me and got me out of jail and also helped me fight the case and beat it. That was the first indication to me that if I took a step or two that, you know, there would be people behind me helping me along the way. And uh, that was the, that was the real propulsion that I needed to start to really make strides in my life. Uh, I stayed with that company for a good 10 years, and it got to the point where I uh, I started to, to really want to make a bigger difference in my life and in my community, and my uh, boss supported me with it. He, uh, he also helped me get my first house. Uh, he helped set up a mortgage for me and the whole thing, and you know, which I definitely paid him back and appreciated it. And he, uh, he was the one that told me that I would, if I wanted to, that I had the ability to start my own business, and that's what I went out and did. I started to make the preparations to uh, to start my own business. Uh, it wasn't as easy as I thought because I had to jump through a lot of hoops uh, just going down to the uh, uh, Department of uh, Consumer Affairs and uh, filling out the application where they say, have you ever been incarcerated or have you ever been arrested? And uh, going through that whole process was just uh, nerve-wracking and then having to get uh, uh, letters of recommendation from people that I knew. Uh, now, I had met a few people since I had been out because I had been doing, uh, I, was, I was really trying to make a big difference in my life. So I was associating with people that were pillars in the community, and I was learning a lot from them. So those were the people that I went to asking for uh, this letter of recommendation. And I was thoroughly fabulous by what these folks wrote uh, as character references for me. Uh, And those were the things that helped me, uh, that contributed to me getting a license for uh, my home improvement business. Uh, it's a really humbling experience to even sit here and still think about, you know, some of those, uh, some of the words that these people wrote about me. Uh, and it was such a big difference in the person that I had become from the person that I was 20 years earlier. Uh, truly amazing. And it all happened because of the decision that I made to want to to be the best person that I could be and just not stop. Just don't give up no matter what happened. You know, uh, so that's how things turned out for me. Uh, none of this was really easy. There were many times that I uh, felt that Felt like I didn't know if I could do it. Uh, there was there were so many new scenarios that popped up that I didn't feel that I was smart enough to handle the situation. 
and I just had to buckle down and handle it. I spoke to people, uh, asked questions, and in certain cases got educated for the things that I needed to know in order to be able to uh, accomplish the goals that I wanted. <coughs> Excuse me. So, do uh, – And, Michael, if you could give our, you know, listeners, maybe there's someone today listening to this call – that's in the situation that you were in or a similar situation or someone who, you know, needs to clean up something in their lives, you know, what advice would you give them? Mm. Well, I think one of the biggest things would be to learn how to forgive yourself because everyone makes mistakes. Uh, we all don't make the best choices in our life. But at any given time, we can decide to make the right choice uh, for our lives, for our future. And in making that choice, we have to make the commitment to do whatever it is to make sure that we accomplish those goals that we have in mind. Uh, for many people, it takes on different looks, but uh, the uh, undeniable uh, 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 way to accomplish it is to stay directed and focused and committed to yourself. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing, wanting to always be the best that you can be in whatever you're doing. And... Go for it. And anyone can do that. Uh, a lot of times the, 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 the task at hand may look larger than life, and most of the time it does, especially if we're used to doing things. Uh, and, and we're used to making bad choices and, 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 and have made a, a large mess out of what we're living in. Uh, but it only takes that bit of time, you know, uh, it's sometimes it's painful, sometimes not as painful. But the only way to get to any place is to put one foot in front of the other. That is the only way. There's no way you can wish it away. There's no way that you can wash it away. It's just that it just takes work. And uh, once you commit to that and you start to take those first couple of steps, the feeling that you have inside of yourself about what you're doing kind of propels you along the way. And I would say that for anyone who wants to make a change, make the decision, take the first step, and then just keep going. Because as you go along, it may not get easier, but you get stronger. And your strength is what carries you through. Wow, That's really beautiful. That was powerful. Yes. It was very powerful. Michael, what if someone was touched by what you said today, if somebody wants to get in contact with you and, you know, maybe make that connection, uh, tell us how they would contact you. Oh, okay. There are a number of ways. Uh, I have an email address at thecarpentryplus at com. That's T-H-E-C as in cat, A-R. P E N T R Y P L U S at AOL dot com. The Carpentry Plus. That is the best way to reach me. If it's about a business or arrangement, you can email me or you can phone me at uh five one six four one zero zero eight one two. And uh, Thank you, Michael. You're getting you're getting ready to open up a uh, Facebook account for your business, correct? Uh, can you tell yes, us uh, what we'll be looking for? Oh, yes. I am uh, I will be uh, very soon initiating a website and a uh, business Facebook page, uh, which would be The Carpentry Plus uh, and the uh, – the website, I don't have the exact name for it yet, but that will be out in a couple of weeks. The Facebook page, business page, will be online uh, within the next week or so. Very good, Michael. Thank you for sharing with us, you know, so generously tonight. And, you know, I, 
heard your story before, but you told it today in a way that, you know, I really never heard. And, and I just really appreciate you being so open and honest and raw and just letting our, our listeners just be blessed and, and that you change your, you know, your life. And, you know, a lot of times for people, the biggest inspiration for knowing they can change their lives is to look at someone who's changed their life. So it was really an honor to have you as our first Sunday superstar. You know, typically speaking, every week when we, you know, end our calls and we have someone who came on the call to be interviewed, we ask them if there was anything they want to leave. If they could only leave the audience with one thing, what would it be? And I actually want to leave the audience with something you said that I just thought was absolutely beautiful. And I wrote it down and, and I quoted it. You know, Michael, what you said was, when the universe is in your corner because you made a commitment to do something good, everything works out. And, you know, every one of us has gone into this new year with a commitment to do something good, to do something really great in our lives, to be just better than we ever have been before, to make this a better year than we ever have made it before. And I truly believe from the bottom of my heart that everyone listening to this call is going to make 2015 the absolute best year of their life. And, Michael, like you said, when you get committed and you're living in committed action, when you do the work and you're living in your purpose, everything will always work out. So thank you so much, Michael, for being on our call tonight. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's really been an honor. And uh, I hope that someone does get something out of this. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Akeen, is there anything you want to add before we end our call this evening? Um, of course. Uh, thank you so much, Michael, for being uh, our very first uh, first Sunday Superstar 2015. It was definitely an honor. And if you were touched by something that Michael said today, you can definitely check out his show on Change Your Minds Online, the brand new site, so check it out. And we also are on Podomatic, Stitcher, iTunes, Tune in and of course SoundCloud. All right. Thank you everyone so much who called in tonight. You know, we love you, we appreciate you, and we are looking forward to this journey in two thousand fifteen, the year of execution. Thank you. Have a great night, everyone. Great. Good night.